Hello to our viewers. I'm here with the Honorable Speaker of the House of Assembly, Alex Boyd Nice. And today, the 17th of April, marks her 18th year in office as a Speaker of the House. It's really good to be able to speak with you this afternoon, Mrs. Nice. I'm honored and I'm particularly thrilled about the reason for you being here yes. in the House of Assembly yes. today. So, 18 years, that's a long stint. What has the experience been like? I'd have to say mixed. I say mixed because there have been some very turbulent times. It has been rewarding most of the time, I'm happy to say. And um, it has been a journey, a very, very exceptional and interesting journey. Yes, I, I, would, I would think so. And uh, during these 18 years, you've had the opportunity to interact with several different politicians from different backgrounds with different perspectives. How has that interaction been for you, if probably you were comparing then to more recently? It's been a learning experience because people's character vary, you know, persons are very different in their outlook. They bring a different perspective to the table. They have views that are not necessarily similar, even when they're on the same side. And so a speaker is called upon to sort of use her judgment, her best judgment in all situations. So it's been certainly not boring. It's been anything but boring. It's one of the things that I, I am pleased about is the fact that certain members who initially were, I would say, not happy with me, I think have come grudgingly to accept <laughs> me. And even to the point, now that they're not in the house, to acknowledge that, yes, we saw where you were coming from. Yes, yes. So that sort of makes me feel I'm doing a good job. Yes. But I have to tell you that the imprimatur, if you'd like to call it that, for me, was when opposition members would take me to court and the court would side with me. That for me means that there was the top element telling me that I was right. That you were right. And, and you would have had to be someone who is very forceful, very confident, very sure, very learned. I mean, you, you know what you speak about when you speak about it. Just tell us a little bit about yourself as a person, because I think even sometimes it comes across as controversial. But to me, it looks like you're confident and you're sure about yourself. So tell us a bit about that aspect of you. I think I have always regarded life on the whole as a learning experience. So from that perspective, I feel that Every day in life you are learning, mm -hmm. and I set myself out to learn well. So also I totally recognize that, and I've said it before when I'm sitting in the chair, all knowledge does not lie in the same head. And so after 18 years, I have come to realize what I thought of in the beginning is true up to now in that when you're confronted with issues, you have to know the rules, mm -hmm. you have to understand the rules, and if you're not certain, consult, consult, consult. I've never felt I know it all. I always feel that there's some other person who can bring a perspective that would make it clearer to me that I'm on the right track mm -hmm. or not. Right, right. It, just, it just happens to have been lucky for me that mostly it's been that I've You're right. been on the right track. Yes, and that's good. Uh, in terms of uh, the debate in the House, if we were to speak on that level now, uh, comparing it before and now, you know, as you come across the, the different um, people that, that represent um, government, and the opposition, how has that been for you? Has it been less or more challenging? Um, 
I think because I'm able better to cope now, um, it's been less challenging. When I became a speaker, um, Edison James was the leader of the opposition. And um, Rosie Douglas, of blessed memory, was the Prime Minister. And um, Mr. James, I guess it appeared to me, was very unhappy about my selection as speaker. And every opportunity he had, both in the house and out of the house, he let the world know that. For me, it meant that I had to rise above his disregard for me mm -hmm. and to a certain extent um, his interpretation of the rules of the house. And so I had a duty to let him know. The standing orders say I, my, my interpretation stands. Right. And um, I have to say that I sensed a level of chauvinism with the opposition at that point. And um, I found it very irksome because anybody who knows anything about him will know that I wouldn't call myself a feminist, but I certainly champion the rights of women to do what they want and to follow any career that they choose, etc. So I, I sort of stood my ground, if you like. And um, then came other leaders of the opposition over the period. And um, I sort of had to deal with whatever came my way. I am a prayerful person in the sense that I believe in the power of God mm -hmm. over matters of man. And uh, divine intervention was never my last resort. It was always my first resort. Um, the other interventions, court, calling other sitting speakers, etc., came after. Mm -hmm. And I'm convinced now more than ever that divine intervention cannot be broken by man. And men frustrate themselves to think that they can interfere with God's plan. Because okay. I, I was just about to ask you if as a woman, seeing that it's a profession or a sphere that is mostly dominated by males, if you ever felt like you had to push more, that you had to be more forceful to stand your ground. The saying that women have to work twice as hard to get half as far is more pronounced as a, being a speaker yes. than in many other fear, mm -hmm. spheres. Because by and by, women are being accepted as CEOs yes. in international corporations and all sorts of ways. But the number of speakers and the number of women prime ministers, women speakers and women prime ministers, re still are, um, is low. Yes, still a small percentage. Yes, and m women members of parliament. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, as I mentioned, women of members of parliament, there were two occasions that I can recall that women members of parliament in the opposition, in the house, joined their male counterparts in saying the most horrible things about me, a woman like themselves. But you know, they have a, there's a saying, what does not kill you makes you fat. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> And what does not <laughs> deflate you makes you stronger. So guess what? A lot of people tell me that I am a strong woman. I don't know fully what that means. Mm -hmm. If it means that 
you're going to stand up to bullies, be they men or women. Well, okay, I'm a strong woman. Yes, you're a strong woman. And if it means that I will not let people walk over me or use me as their mat, then okay, I'll accept that I'm a strong woman. So I'm correct in saying that there is absolutely no time where you felt like you want to throw in the towel. Like, this is it. You don't want to do this job anymore. Not really, you know. Because, you see, so many people, not only in Dominica, not only in the region, but even all over the world, in this day and age of the type of communication we have, they have heard about my travails. If you go on YouTube, you, 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 it's amazing what is on YouTube. I've seen snippets of business in the house that I didn't even know had been captured that far. And so people all over the world see it. My, my colleagues at the Commonwealth Parliamentary Association, even colleagues who are not necessarily Commonwealth people. Mm -hmm. And they call me, they email me, and they let me know that they think I'm doing a good job. So my question to myself would be, if your opponent tells you you're doing a bad job, and people who you trust their judgment, including the judges who sat on my cases, tell you you're, going do, you're doing a good job, whom do you believe? Whom do you believe? So I think it is my analyzing things like that that, 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 that I am sustained. Well, I think that's excellent, and I want to congratulate you on your 18 years sitting as Speaker of the House, and uh, it seems to me like you may be there for another number of years, because you're not about to hand in the towel, but, um, you know, in, in, in the future, as you continue as Speaker of the House, I just want to congratulate you and wish you, wish you all the best. Any Th last words? Thank you very much. Yes, I want to thank the many, many people men, women, and even children from all walks of life, from all over, who, despite the critics, tell me I'm doing a good job. Mm -hmm. And honestly, I'd rather believe them than the naysayers, and that makes me happy. I'm humbled that people stop me and take time off to tell me that they're pleased with the job that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And by the grace of God, he will decide and of course the government, how long I remain as speaker. Yes. <laughs> but I can tell you one thing, I'm not about to give up. It's not part of my nature. Mm -hmm. I'm the original little engine that could. You only have to tell me I can do something <laughs> and I'll show you I can. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there you have it. We just had a conversation with the Honorable Speaker of the House of Assembly of Dominica, Honorable Alex Boyd Knight. Thank you for viewing.